Can't go around saying I didn't try to shoot him in the face with a cannonball. It's vlog day 1081. I still don't know why I can't see nothing. Good morning. It's Tuesday, I guess. I gotta go, today, today's gotten away from me. I have two scripts that I translated this morning for CNRS. I'm gonna go and do some voice acting for them on Friday. One of them is a documentary about echolocation with whales, and one of them was a documentary about robots. I don't remember, my brain is so fried. The other things that are going on, I just posted a new poll on Patreon that I'm gonna try and fulfill tomorrow. Uh, it's a churchy poll, if you wanna vote, on one of two churchy locations that I might go take a photo of tomorrow with a disposable camera, and by might, I mean I will. I also need to go and take a photo of Sacré-Cœur this afternoon because that was what was voted on by patrons of all stripes and non-patrons alike, and that it's, it's, it's about to win. I mean, it's, it's way in the lead. So before I do that though, apparently I'm gonna go sign for the office tomorrow, but they wanna see proof of insurance. Like I have to have insurance, like renter's insurance, and I don't have that. So I'm, I just signed up for a meeting with an insurance company, which sounds so exciting. And so I'm gonna go do that really quickly. Before I go take the photo of Sacred, you can see how the day is just getting away from me entirely. And all of this, in the midst of it, I was gonna talk about why I stopped writing a few months ago, because I feel, I, it's a question that I've gotten a number of times. I think I've alluded to the reasons why, but I've never really gotten that deep into it. Maybe, I don't know. I can't really think that straight today, but it was what was on my schedule for a writerly Wednesday today being Tuesday for me. It's Wednesday for you. Happy writerly Wednesday, everybody. Let's talk about the creative process and in specifically how our brains have limited energy for certain types of tasks and how apparently I've decided to dive into a lot of the same type of task with my life. And it is, it's, it's, it's crazy. Let's just, I'm just, I'm going to go get, the, I, I got to go get this meeting over with and then we can go to Sacre-Cœur. One hour later and I have business insurance. I'm, I'm officially an adult now. Oh my goodness. That was actually pretty easy. It just took about an hour. <sighs> Struggling right now to stay awake a little bit, but uh, it's called civil insurance. It was explained to me by Marie Lore, who's gonna be my uh, landlady, my business landlady here soon, but the way Richard explained it was that it's basically a stupid tax or a st stupid insurance in case you do anything dumb, like, you know, knock a flower pot off of a windowsill and hit somebody in the head. Then you're covered. Respons I guess your responsibility for it is at least, I don't know. Words escape me at the moment. I'm gonna head towards Sacre Coeur now. Get this photo. And uh, oh yeah, we're just gonna talk about why I'm not, or I haven't been writing for the last six months or so. And it should be pretty obvious actually, by the way, the way, the way that today is going, it should be pretty clear. as I think I've expressed on a few occasions, takes up about the same space in my brain as vlogging. I think it's that storytelling space, it's not just the creative side of things, because there are certain types of creative tasks that I can do after vlogging all day or after writing all day. But the energy comes out of a, an area of my, I don't know, I keep thinking of it as an area of my brain that's not totally energy depleted. But by the end of a day of like writing, especially, like you get four hours into writing and anything beyond that, and it's, it's exhausting, it's emotionally exhausting. It, isn't really physically exhausting, obviously, which is why it's always good to go for a run after you've been riding for a long time, but it is painful in its own way. Writing has been a really important element of my life for a decade. I mean, I started writing my first book. We talked about this recently, but I started writing my first book in 2010. And at the time, I was still debating what to do with it and was eventually went over to the idea of self-publishing by a couple of people that I met along the way whose books I read, whose ideas really pushed me towards self-publishing because of the entrepreneurship, the control. There are a lot of elements to it that I thought were really interesting. Can I see? This is where I was hoping to take the photo of Sacre Coeur, but it might be a challenge with these trees. I didn't realize, I mean, I knew they'd be green, but I, uh, we'll see if I can find the right framing from down here. But I always put an effort in, like I wanted to continue writing all the time, developing the craft. And one of the reasons I made a promise to myself or I made a goal to publish 10 books in 10 years was to keep writing, to keep writing new stuff. One of the dangers that you get into when you're writing is that you just go around in circles trying to refine and perfect one piece of work. 
when in reality, often the best thing you can do for your writing is to invest in something new. And so writing 10 books in 10 years was my way of saying, well, hopefully I'll publish a million words. Hopefully I'll publish, ooh, this might work. We'll see if this works. Hopefully I can publish somewhere in the range of a million words over the course of 10 years. And that should get me into that arena of 10,000 hours, right? That mastery space. I mean, I still got a long, long ways to go to actually master writing, but that was kind of the idea. See if we can't make this uh, work. Problem is that we can't zoom with the disposable camera. So I was hoping to do it down the street. Let's see if I can do it from the other side of these trees. Oh yeah, this is where the money's at. Let's get this shot from right about here. It's kind of fun having like the manual, you know, like a camera that you can't adjust anything on, you just point and click. Let's see if that works. I have no idea what to expect from any of these. That's kind of the fun of the disposable cameras is they're like, they've all, they're all like five years overdue. Ooh, let's go down the hill. The fun of the disposable cameras is that they're all like five years uh, expired. They're little expiration dates, maybe longer. Their expiration dates are for like 2013. So you can never really know what you're gonna get. And sometimes you get some really fun little double exposures or light leaks. For the most part, they've been pretty solid. So we'll find out how that turned out. If you want to influence tomorrow's photo, you better jump on Patreon like right now because uh, I think it's only gonna last for about 30 minutes after this vlog posts, but there should be a new one to follow that up pretty quickly after. And it's between Notre Dame and St. Paul. So if you want to influence a postcard of Notre Dame without its roof or St. Paul with its roof, that's on you. Anywho, I think I'm gonna go down and get a drink at Maison Maison because I keep trying to, you know, remind you that Maison Maison is in the game and it keeps getting shoved to the tail end of, you know, videos and so it doesn't get properly promoted or pushed. Also, this street, if you're wondering where I'm at, I'm directly south of Anvers. Anvers is the stop on line two that puts you right at the foot of Sacré-Cœur. And if you go down this street, uh, it's kind of blocked by the tree. If you have a nice, really long lens and you get to the bottom of this street, which I'll tell you the name of once I see a sign that tells me what the name is, you can get a nice little shot. But you have to have a pretty long lens to make it worthwhile. Your cell phone will not, will not do it. But on the writing side, again, whew, really all over the place here today. I wanted to take a break for a couple of reasons. One, I was banging my head against a wall with Agnar's box and trying to figure out what to do with it, which I feel like I'm finally figuring out what I need to do to fix that book. So that's good. I needed a break from that, but also I was really exhausting myself. You know the whole burning the candle at both ends and in the middle? The middle portion was writing because it was just exacerbating any sense of exhaustion that I already had. Not because I didn't enjoy it. Also, it's Rue Torgo. If you're, if you're looking for the streets. Not only was it exhausting me, but it was kind of catalyzing the exhaustion that vlogging naturally brings with it, just because it was burning through whatever creative reserves I had by using up the energy I needed literally every day to make a video. Like, I don't necessarily have to write every day to make things work out, you know, to make ends meet, but I do have to make a video every day. That's sort of a requirement. And at the end of every day, no matter how tired, sick, hungover, lonely, heartbroken, or exhausted or happy or exuberant about life I am, the result is the same. I still have to edit a video. Like that's going to have to happen either way. And so I figured if I gave myself a little bit of a break, I was gonna increase my longevity for vlogging by, you know, removing writing from the daily mix. If not the daily mix, at least the regular mix. And that worked for the most part. I think that was a really wise decision. Gave me a little bit of time to reflect on the books that I was already working on. Also gave me some space to get more excited and creative about the books that are on their way the stories that I want to be telling. All in all, I think it was, it, it, it really paid off and it enabled me to re, kind of refocus on making sure that my vlog, you know, and me personally, my life, I guess, as a whole, because it is a little bit conflated at times, didn't just completely fall apart as it has threatened to do at various points along the way. So it was really, really helpful to take a break from the writing, but I have missed it and I have been thinking about it a lot and I am enjoying getting back into it in the arenas that I'm able to. And it's still a lot of work. It's still really hard to sit down and write for extended periods of time, even though I really enjoy it, even though I find it incredibly satisfying, even though it's probably one of the number one things I enjoy doing with my time. It's good to remember that it is still just as hard as it's always been. And even though I've been doing it for a decade and I have published probably, you know, somewhere around 800,000 words, it's still a challenge. It's still replete with challenges.
it's really not a bad spot for beer. Not great for uh, sirens, but you know. So this is actually a good example. Today, what all did I get done today? Woke up, translated two scripts, you know, made a Patreon post, sent a whole bunch of emails, trying to get caught up on comments, managed to work on my book proposal a little bit, a little bit on the infographic, and then like signed up for business insurance, among other things today. So it's kind of a busy day. But I still have the energy. I mean, it's a definitely a shift. I'm tired, granted, and it's definitely a shift in mentality, but I'm shifting towards, you know, making a vlog and have enough energy to do that, to put it together and to hopefully come back, you know, and edit it tonight once this is all over. But it is a little bit of an easier vlog today, for the one. The two, it's a totally different type of energy, so that like, it's not a monumental effort to overcome it right now and, uh, and, and you know, talk to the camera, which if I had spent the entire day writing, uh, it would. It's funny how translation is different. Translation is also really exhausting but doesn't leave you with the same sense of exhaustion, which is, is, is really good. So, there's that. I'm gonna enjoy this beer. I'm also gonna keep working uh, while I sit here. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll wrap it up here in a minute. Beer consumed and I'm completely caught up on my comments, which hasn't happened in a while, so that's a nice feeling. Definitely come to Maison Maison for a drink. They're down here by the river. Really easy to find. It literally is house, 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 house. And you can see they're in the game. So make sure you come here, grab a drink. They have food as well. Just sit out, enjoy the sun with some friends. I might end up coming back out to watch the World Cup match tonight because I haven't watched any yet and it would be a good night to do it. So I'm gonna go home, edit this, and if I'm still feeling up for it, I'll come back out and watch that. And I will see you bright and early tomorrow morning for a photo shoot wandering around Paris with Ellen and M. If you haven't done a photo shoot with them yet, you definitely should. I'm gonna do it tomorrow. All the cool kids are doing it. See you tomorrow for that.